Hello and welcome to my hot stream. Hot stream Spirit Island. A god game. A board game. Let's see how complex it's going to be. How complex? Well, we're going to need to click on the how to play button. Like really quickly though, I'll show you the options. I messed around with the volume. As always, I turn on the alternate thematic style because that was supposed to be easier to sort of figure out your lands, separate them out. And everything else I've left alone. We're going to leave it on beginner because that's what it says to do because the game can be quite complex. How to play? We're going to play the tutorial because we have no clue. There are 32 pages. This is old school. This is like a proper, you know, guide that you would get when you bought a game back in the 90s. Here you go. Here's the player's guide. Welcome to Spirit Island. I'm Ray and I'll be helping you learn how to play. Great. Great. You can see your island behind me. Let's look. At, let's take a closer look. It's kind of quilted. The board is divided into eight lands with exactly two of each terrain. Okay, that's good to know. The ocean space on the left is not a land and is not in play. Lands next to the ocean are coastal and others that are inland. The other edges of the board are not the ocean and are inaccessible. Two green jungles. One is coastal and the other is inland. They both look like they're coastal to me. And there are two gray mountains. One is coastal and the other is inland. Again, I guess that means the direction they're going. So one's coastal means it's along the coast. Inland means it goes into. There are two brown sands. Okay, so the color color coding makes sense. Wetlands. Those are swampy wetlands. You can adjust your view of the island. Try zooming with the mouse wheel. There's my what mouse wheel. Not the best looking. And moving with clicking or dragging. There you go. Dragging, dragging is much better than this slow wasp. Find control. Hey, that's the island board. Now let's look at the pieces that populate the board. Because this is a board game. And so you actually have proper looking items on the board. The Han are the native semi-nomadic human inhabitants. They came to Spirit Island long ago and have worked out a coexistence with the spirits. They look like they're living in mushrooms. Cool. Mushroom people. Yep, there they go, the mushrooms. The board starts with six mushrooms. There's not normally any population growth in the game's time span. But it's possible. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Oh, what do we got here? Blight, uh, bubbly black goo. But humans tend to harm the land much faster than it can recover. If the invaders cause too much blight, you will lose the game. Oh, no. Where are the invaders? What do they look like? Oh, they actually have houses. So this is... In the real world, I guess? It's like a fantasy island in the real world. They begin to colonize your island. I, the colonization and taming of the land has upset the natural balance. Um, these look like normal houses. When I looked, it looked like the period of time was maybe 19th century. So that makes sense. They would have houses. On the right in the mountain, there is a town. These pieces represent homesteads and small frontier settlements. On the left in the sands, there's a city. Okay, so towns two, cities three. The islands are persistent, the invaders are persistent. They explore the island, build settlements, and ravage the land with their activities causing blight and harming the Dahan. Let's see what happens if the invaders are left unchecked. Oh no, they're gonna spread all over the place. Hey, there's some invaders. That's what they look like. Whoa, they're spreading. The first step is to explore in a random terrain, in this case mountains, and explorers added to any mountain land with a source of invaders. The ocean is always a source of invaders, and so is a town or city. Okay, that's good to know. So this ocean will be where they come. They'll spawn from. Coastal mountains get gotten explored, and so did the island inland. This reading is going to be hard today. So it has a town. After exploring a terrain, on the next turn, the invader will build their adding city and town structures. There you go. Town and a city. If there are more towns and cities in a land, they will build a city. Otherwise, they will build a town. Got you. So on the coastal mountain, okay, they got you, got you, got you. But the videos aren't finished yet. Oh, no, no. They'll explore another random terrain and do some more. There he goes. Boom. Taking over. Uh, the videos explored in the jungle. Woo. So, yeah. Spawn, spawn, spawn. Mountains are in danger. On the next turn, the invaders will ravage these lands. And don't forget, they'll build a jungle exploring them. Boom. Blight. During ravage, each invader damages the land and the Dahan at the same time. This can blight the land and destroy the Dahan. 
but any surviving Dahan fight back and destroy various stones. Are the Dahan mushroom people? Are they mushrooms with like legs? Okay, so we just killed Nicosia Mountain. One Dahan survived and fought back, dealing damage to destroy the town. So they're like maybe they are giant walking mushroom things. Okay, ravaging, ravaging, boom, blight. Land takes too much damage, blight is added to the land. That happens in both mountains. Now they will build in the jungle. Getting some fast. Good. These lands are still dangerous because next turn they will ravage and cause blight. And we're just seeing like the worst case scenario if you don't do anything, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put cities everywhere. Yep. Yeah, now they're gonna ravage everything, killing one of my Dahan. Only one Dahan, and nobody survived to fight back. Light, light, light. Yep. And leading to the end of the Dahan and Spirit Island as we know it. But it isn't the whole story, it's called Spirit Island for a reason, because there's a spirit. Woohoo! Let's go. Now we're gonna learn how the spirits work. So if you can see here, the spirit at the top. A thousand years before even the Dahan arrived, powerful spirits have existed on the island. The invaders are spreading impossibly quickly, and the spirits must respond. You're the spirit. Can you save your island? River surges in sunlight is my spirit. You must drive all invaders from the island. That may seem an impossible task at the moment. However, the more you grow in power and make the invaders afraid, the easier it will become to win. Cool. Spirit presence marks the land your spirit occupies. Your presence is needed in order to affect the land. Okay, one presence in the wetland here. You'll be adding more very soon. Cool. Okay, the invaders have an initial chance to explore. Invaders card progression down here. They show at the bottom of the screen. They flip over the top card of the invader deck and explore there. Because again, this is a board game, so we have decks. We have a lot of cards at the bottom. Boom, jungle. I like that. Click on it. Oh, yep. Here comes, yep, they're spawning from their city. The invaders explored in the jungle, that card now advanced, so next they will build in the jungle and explore somewhere else. Yeah, we've seen how they work. Yeah, my spirit's gonna grow. Spirit of the island grows in power. Spirit summary is always visible at the top of the screen. Click on your right, click on your spirit to view their full size panel, full size hand of power cards. There we are. I like the, the style. Again, this is very information dense. Right off the bat, you're always going to be like, well, what is all this stuff? That's the biggest problem. The biggest obstacle of getting into these games is just having, taking your time to get used to all of the cards and abilities and stats. Yeah, your wetlands count as something. Again, there's not going to be a lot of pop-up information here because it is like a, bar a board game. There is a glossary in the game as well. This is what I have in my hand. Target myself, give myself energy. I can do damage. Gather up to two Dahan. There are now at least two Dahan. Add one Dahan and gain one energy. And push up to three. Not sure what that means. It looks, looks like wash away. I can push them away. A city. Or three people. Oh. Yeah, I can also click... And you can see those as well. Every turn, the first thing you do is choose a growth option from the three available options. Click the growth, a growth group to use it. Here's the growth ones. Click the middle growth option so we can add more presence to the island. Add one more presence. We only have one currently. Our spirit panel has two tracks of presence. The more you move from the top one, the more whatever that is, right? <laughs> okay. That's cool. Is that, is that, uh, where are the two tracks of presents? I have no clue. There's all kinds of this presence stuff here, see? I'm assuming all of this is presents. Seems that way, but we'll, we'll see. Based on the growth option, we can add presents to any land that's one away from your existing presence. I want to put it with my Dahan that are already there. Drag the first presents from the energy track down to the mountain. I like mountain. Okay, so we're not going to go into the Dahan. So we over here, we have two tracks of the upper right hand corner. I can grab this one. It's like, again, it's straight like a board game. It's like completely 
So I'm guessing this is a physical board game as well. Click on that. Now you gain two energy per turn instead of one. That's indicated by but the invaders might be able to destroy these. See here at the two shining at the top in the center with my avatar. Bottom presence track is for card plays. The more you move from that, the more. So here, card plays down here. Okay. Drag the first presence from the card play <laughs> track down to the. Okay, so we're gonna. It's at least it's telling us right. Flop it down here. <laughs> Boom! We got another one. Now you have two energy, as indicated in the top left of your panel. Cool, we're growing, we're growing. So this, they get to grow, we get to grow every turn. After getting energy, you have the opportunity to play power cards. You begin the game with a hand of four power cards. Which one do you think I should take? Hover over or right-click a power card in your hand in the top left to see. I've seen them already in detail. Energy play. Top left, zero, two, zero, one. Gotcha. You're going to tell me what to play though, aren't you? The order that you play cards doesn't matter, but you only get one chance to play them right now in the spirit phase. We'll explain why you're choosing the cards soon. See, I knew it. It's tutorial. They're going to tell us what to do. Click Flash Floods. This is one, um, as you can see here, one damage if targeted land is coastal plus one damage. Okay. Okay. And River's Bounty. River's Bounty was gather up to two Dahan. If there are now at least two Dahan, add one extra Dahan and gain one energy. Okay. Notice that when you play cards, your energy cost is deducted from your total amount. Yes, we're, we're out. We're tapped out. We will pay two cards in the total right now based on the bottom presence track. Even though we could afford to play Boon of Bigger, because it's zero, we can't play it because we don't have enough. We're going to move on. So click finish playing cards below to continue. So what happens? How, do, how are those targeted? We'll see. I'm not sure what that symbol means. Maybe turn. Now it's time to use some of these powers. Powers is the main way that you affect the island. That was it. Fast. Bird powers are marked in red. And act before the invaders get a chance. That's what it's telling you to do. You have a chance now to go first. And that's the ones with like the red. At the bottom there you can see like a red attack. Yeah. Slow powers are blue, and you can see this one has a slow. And after after the invaders are taking all their actions, so we've got initiative. Yep, yeah, flash floods. Is this as a fast power? Okay, well maybe that's the it's the actual red around the cost is red. That's that's the part that tells you, and then blue. We had it wrong. We can now use it to deal damage and get rid of invaders. Cool. Flashfoots can target any land that's within range of one of your presences. I've had all the possible targets. Are you going to tell me which one I'm going to use? Yes. Of course. Target the island jungle. Okay. Let's take this. And... Oh, that's cool. Plop. And off to the ocean you go. And it looks like they can only take one damage. Invaders. Yeah. So they have one health. Uh, explorers have one health, towns have two health, and cities have three health. Good to know. That's pretty easy to count, because you can see clearly three buildings, two buildings, one. Pretty nice. There was explorer with one health, and we were dealing one damage, so the explorer was damaged and destroyed. Also, I think it does more damage if it's coastal. Land is coastal, plus one extra damage. So you can take out a town. That's pretty interesting. We destroy the invaders in that land, so they will be unable to build there in this turn. That means fewer invaders for us to deal with there. Okay. No more fast powers left to use. Next invader will take their action. Go do your thing. Build in the jungle. The jungle card in the build slot, so the invader will build right there. It says jungle. J, the bottom. Black little town in there. They build a tower in the coastal jungle. We're going to have to take it out. Yes. Next invaders will flip over a new invader card and explore in that terrain. Where's the invader cards at? We have explore. We're gonna find out. Let's have a let's keep an eye on this. Yeah, it's explore. That's where it's at. That's the invader cards down here. And you're gonna explore the mountain, coastal mountains. Explore the mountains too. 
in the mountains. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. It's pretty straightforward. We know exactly what they're going to do. It's just... And now my slow ability. Now I just change my slow powers. Let's start with River's Bounty, which gets more Dohan, which can help be useful for fighting back. You can target any land with a range of zero of our presence. It's the only land that has our presence. Yep. Okay. Inland. They want us to use it on the inland because they can fight back. Allows you to gather Dahan. Gathering lets you move boosts from adjacent lands onto the target land. Really? Okay, I didn't know that. So that's not summoning. It's just allowing you to move to that land. If two or more Dahan end up in the target land, a new Dahan appears. It's a rare and powerful ability. We have easily have two that can pop over there. And click on the highlighted Dahan and the adjacent lands to gather them. Okay. Can't take the other one. I can only take that one. And now I should get a third one. Should spawn as well. Hey, happy, happy little Dahan spawns. Now that we finish using River's Bounty, let's use our other slow power. Which one? There was another one. Massive flooding. Oh, cool. That's just an ability you have. We need to play a power card for this one. This is our innate power. Massive flooding. We'll talk more about this innate power later. Will we now? <laughs> I don't know. Innate powers are used the same way. Yes. Um, this one does push one. That's the power we have, it's just that first one. Getcha. Back to the sea you go. Let you move pieces from the target land to any adjacent so I can move them off. That town is a big threat. We can deal with it by pushing it away. Yes. Click the highlighted town to select it, then click to the coastal sands to push it. Coastal sands? Which one's coastal sands? That one. That's the coastal sands. Uh, do we just click over here? Yep. The months years go by as they always have. Okay, there you go. At the end of every turn, all played power cards are discarded. Your innate power expires, but you may be able to activate again next turn. Cool. Bye-bye, cards. And then you start a new turn. Woot! There's so much left to learn, so let's carry on. Uh, now it's time to grow again. We want to continue adding presence to the island to become stronger and affect more areas. Yes, we do. So there's like a grow phase, there's a card choosing phase, and there's your card playing phases. For those people who are paying attention to the card games. Remember, each turn we choose only one of the three options. Okay, so we can keep adding that. We had also reclaim cards, gain power, card plus one, gain one energy, and gain power, add presence. So that's interesting as well. We can add two presences though. Faster presence building. Okay, on the coast, drag the first presence from the card play. Um, track down, okay, boom. Again, I'm not quite sure about this, but it just a lot. This means I can play two cards, and the next one means I can play three cards, and so on. And because it's a presence, then I can have, you know, stronger sphere of influence. Drag the second presence from the card play, play track down, okay, that's good. Where am I going to put it? Again, the same place? Okay. So now we can play three cards. I think that's what that indicates. Oh, it's double. Wow. When two or more of your presence are in a land, it creates a sacred site that can cater on the board by glowing mark underneath the presence. So basically, I just get better, more powerful abilities. Yeah, for some powers. More powerful presence in whatever land they reside in. You might have noticed that your presence in the wetland also is shown as a sacred site, even though there's only one presence there. Probably because I'm water. This is because of River Surge. Yes, he's water, River Domain, which treats their presence in any wetlands as a sacred site. There you go. You can see your special rules at any time in the bottom left corner of your full spirit panel. Uh, over here, your mm, in wetlands count as mm, so that's that means that your normal presence turns into sacred. Gotcha. Okay, are you still with me? We've finished growth and gained energy. Cool, we can now play up to three cards per turn, but we only have two left in hand. Click on both of them to play them. Look, your innate power is massive flooding has appeared again. Woo, it's time we explain how elementals or elements let you activate your innate power. Okay. When you play a power card, you gain the elements shown on it. For example, Boon of Vigor has sun, water, and plant. Okay. 
Wash away gave you another water along with earth. The total elements you have are shown below your hand of cards. So all this stuff here. You have lots of water, some earth, and so on. Hover over your innate power show that it requires you to have two sun and three wait one sun and two water. If I'm remain, remembering remembering that correctly, it's over here on the side by the way. Okay. Okay. Elements only last while the cards are in play, but the more elements you can gain by gain, playing the right cards, the more powerful effects you can have. Yeah, we see that. They increase in power. Okay, fa okay, finish playing cards. Okay, that's that. Okay, okay, fast. Pro These are fist abilities first. Boon of Vigor targets spirit, not a land. It grants one energy when you target yourself. Gotcha. Yep. Boom. Target myself. Now it's in better phase. There's a jungle card in the ravage slot, so they're available to deal damage in any jungle where they have pieces. Ravage in the jungle, jungle. And I got one little Dohan there. Since we pushed the town away in the last slow phase, there's only an explorer and Dohan there. Explorers always deal one damage. This explorer will deal one damage to the land and one damage to the Dohan. And the Dohan has what, one health? Poof. Yeah. But the Dohan, oh, Dohan has two health. Now we know what their health is because they flip. The damage did not destroy them. They fought back and dealt two damage to the invader in the land. There you go. The damage did not start. So that means they're tapped, I guess, when they turn into a hat. <laughs> Explorers only have one health, so that was uh, more than enough for the loan to hide destroy them. The two more damage dealt to a land, Blight is out there. This time the land only took one damage and no Blight. Okay. The other jungle had no invaders, also no ravage happened there. Next, the invaders will build in the mountains. Build in, in the mountains. This turn, the invaders' construction is booming. In the coastal town, they will build a town. Pop that up, but I got two guys here. We're gonna do a lot of damage. The inland mountain has more towns, one than cities, so they'll build a city there. But I got a lot of guys over here. Dohans to kill them. I do two, four, six damage. They've got um, three, six damage. They got six exactly. Next invaders will flip over a new invader card and explore in that terrain. And it is water. W, wetlands. Check out my wetlands. One over the wetlands as well. Spawn, spawn. I explore the wetlands. The American. Okay, yes, we know what they're going to do next. Now it's my slow ability. We can limit the damage in the mountains next turn by pushing away invaders. Again, we have wash away still. Push up to three on the inland mountain. This one here. Wash away. Push both the town and the explorer to the adjacent sands. Because we can do up to three. That one and that one. Bye bye. Before we use massive flooding again, you might notice that it is a sacred site requirement. I did not notice that. It looks like a frog. Cool. Powers of this requirement we only target lands with range. Okay, good things. We, we Yep, that's right. Use the massive flooding, which does just push again on the top right, which is over here. Push support to the sands. Yep, we don't want them building in our swamp. What are you doing in my swamp? We have no damage abilities, you've noticed. We've reached the end of another turn. This time, all partial damage pieces are restored to full health, and I'm guessing my hats flip over to mushrooms. Yep, the, da the damage to Hans. To Han, so he was damaged. It's restored to full health, so that's why he flipped. Yeah. Well, the invaders, the only thing they can take damage is their towns. As far as we know. Spirit phase again. There are no cards left in hand, so that we should do that, something about that, so we have to choose a card draw. Your played cards discard. Click your discard pile on your summary panel. Let's hop to have a look at them. We only had four. Those are them. Draw all the cards you played. Click anywhere outside the window to close your discard pile. And to get back, you must reclaim them during the growth phase. We saw that earlier. So, for example, here. Reclaim cards. Game plus one. Uh, power card plus one and gain one energy. Uncanny melting. Wow. If Vayers are present, one something, <laughs> one damage maybe? I don't know. If target land is S swamp and wetlands remove one something. All the cards in our discard pile have been claimed. Yes. Plus brand new power card. Power progression deck. So you automatically got the power card Uncanny melting. 
We can play up to three cards this turn. When playing cards, you want to think about how fast or how you'll use them during fast slow phases. Flash floods can help before the ravage in the coastal mountains, rivers, bounty, uncanny building. So there's a lot of strategy here. So you're preventing them from building before they can build. And so you're pushing them into other lands because they're about to build once they spawn into a land and they've got like a the actual you see here, build and build orders and things like that. Go ahead and play Flash Floods and Rivers Bounty and Uncanny Melting. And we only have one of those as fast, which is Flash Floods. Massive Flooding has been activated thanks to all the elements you gain from playing power cards. Yeah, we have all this still here. Um, if you look at their requirements, yeah, we have the requirements in our pile on the left there. Going to be more powerful this turn though. Hover over it to see that the second level has been unlocked. And there we go. Instead, two damage. That does two damage instead, and then pushes them as well. Whatever's left over. So it makes sense to play cards for their elements, even more than for their power effects. We'll make use of massive flaying this slow phase next. Okay, let's move on. Finish playing, and now we get our fast. And have a look at flash floods. Yes. Yep, one damage. But also one damage to targets coastal. We talked about that last time we were looking at it. And we have some coastals here. We got this one here. It's got some people on it. Yep. Any okay, that's next to the ocean, including that mountain where the invaders will ravage. Yep. Boom boom boom. Pretty straightforward. You learn most of this just by playing through anyways, but it's really useful to play a tutorial. Whenever you're dealing damage, you can divide it amongst the invaders in the island, as you wish. I assume that would be the way it was. And because it's two damage, I'm going to take out the town. Towns have two health and deal two damage. If we deal two damage to this town, we'll destroy it and keep the land safe during the revolution. That's what we're going to do. Because we don't want them spawning more stuff there. Boom, boom. Explosion, explosion. Fear, now they're afraid. Now they're finally going to worry about me. Destroy a town generator's one fear. That was what that symbol is now. Da -da -da -da. Uncanny melting gives fear. Can't see it right now. The more fear you generate, the more terrified the invaders be get, become, which I don't know what that means. Cause beneficial effects and reach easier victory conditions. Okay, good. We're, oh my god, we're, we're going to learn about fear soon. Oh god. For now, the invaders are going to take their actions, starting with the ravage of the mountains. Similar to last turn in the coastal mountains, there's a lone explorer with some Dahan. Oh no, we know that's how that's going to play out, of course. Sadly so. Kill that guy. Boom. Took some damage. Yep. There's trouble brewing. There's a city. And it will do three damage. So, so the cities do do damage. But then they're going to turn back and fight back. You can see, right? Yep. There's some blight, but my guys can fight back, right? The city dealt three damage to the land and to the Dahan simultaneously. That's destroyed one Dahan and wounded another. Since two of damage was dealt, a blight was added. And when the blight is added to a land, a presence from each spirit there is destroyed. Oof. So the presence was lost. Cannot only be recovered next to the surviving Dahan. Fight back and destroy that town. City. And the fear multiplies. And we need, what, four fear to win the game? Looks that way. That was a tough battle, but sometimes sacrifice is necessary on the path to victory. I, and I'm going to cast Uncanny Melting to finish the game. One fear. That, I guess that's how it's going to be. Build the wetlands. It's their turn. Our slow powers last turn are paying off now as the invaders will only build a single town. The wetlands. Plop. Okay, they're going to go explore mountains. The little guy goes off and explores the mountains there. Town goes to the mountains. Yep, 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 yep. We know what they're going to do. They always build towns. Slow phase, and we're going to just win. Yep. Remo oh, it also removes blight from sands. Good. Sands and wetlands. Using on the middle wetland, yeah. And that should, because there's a guy there, it should finish off. Yep, there goes the fear four. Ah, uh, it just creates a card. It's not a win condition, it just creates a fear card. With the fear from Uncanny Melting, we reach four generated fear. That earns us a fear card and resets generated fear back to zero. Next turn, before the invaders act, 
The earned fear card will be flipped over and resolved. Fear cards always have a beneficial or neutral effect. Click the fear deck at the bottom to see the status of the fear cards. Well, there you go. <laughs> Not much to look at. There are tiers. Once we earn two more fear cards, we'll reach terror level two in an easier victory condition. We earn all the fear cards, we'll win immediately. Click anywhere outside the window. Yes. Wow, complicated. Also note that remove the blight from the wetland room to the blight pool. The blight pool runs out. It's game over. Okay. I'm not quite sure about the blight pool. I'm not looked at that. There are some built-up invaders in the coastal sands. Use river bounty on that land to bring the hun there as well. Um, this is right here. The coastal sands. This, how much damage is this going to do, by the way? Oh, just to bring the Dohan to destroy it. He wants us to bring that one and that one. Because we're going to go ahead and take that guy out eventually. He's going to pop. Get a new one. With massive flo flooding powered up, we can deal damage and destroy the bears using the central wetlands to destroy the town. Click. See a little damage. Remember, it'll heal if you just pass the turn. Take it out. More fear. Also, lets us push up to three explorers to four towns. We can push away that explorer. But remember what happens in a ravaging land with a lone explorer? It will end up destroying, up destroyed by the Dahan without causing any problems. Up to, we don't have to do it. Click finish. Ching. Land passes. And here we go again. And now we start over again. This is a good time to use our third growth option. Click on it to gain new, a new power card and add a presence. So this is all reminding me of another card game that I played, which had similar options. It was board game built as well, and you'd have options to either choose to expand, to gain mana, or draw a card. Very similar in that sort of setup phase. You compare it with the upkeep phases in other games as well. Um, gain a power card and add a presence. That's good. Oof, defense six, it's fast. We don't know what that means and you may remove instead. There you go. Let's replace the present that was destroyed last turn. So we're gonna put that back on the inland mountain. We put all of our cards this turn and plan to reclaim them next turn. Yeah, let's do that. Boom, 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 whatever order. We're going to like massive flooding again. But only at the first level. Click finish playing cards. So we have two fast abilities this time. Okay, plop this on myself again. We have another fast power available. Nature's Resilience. This is defense. Right click or over it. Um, we have no clue what this is. Defense 6. Don't know what that means. You may instead remove one. What's this? This is Blight? I can't remember. I think it's Blight. If you have two water, which we do. Isn't useful. However, since we have two water this turn, we use it to... Yes, we can remove a Blight. That's it. You will still be able to use massive flooding later. Elements are not consumed by effects. You have them for this turn so long as the cards are in play. Only one blight! Oh my god! Nature resilience on that mountain. Then click the okay. Here we are. The last blight there. Remove the blight. Last turn we generate enough fear to earn a fear card. Now at the start of the very phase we get to flip it over and resolve it. Yeah! Click to flip the fear card. Okay, more information. Um, do we get to choose? Fear cards have escalating effects depending on the current terror level. We're still at level 1, so the top... Ah, oh, okay. Each player removes one invader from an inland land. So we can see that's going to happen. There are two different ones they can choose from. Oh, we can remove an in... Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But we're going to do it. The inland mountains, we can prevent the... Yep, so they were going to build in the mountains. So this prevents them from building. Bye bye. Next evaders will ravage, build, and explore as usual. It's just starting to get familiar. Yes, it is. So, this is not a bad tutorial. I like it. But it's so long, this is all we're going to be doing today, it looks like. Yep, we killed it. 
So we didn't need to push it away. Spawn, spawn, spawn. We can build a town because they were going to build a town in the mountain. So it happened. Now they're going to explore the sands. One there. Sands are becoming real problematic, aren't they? Okay. Slow movement. We got washed away. We can clear the inland sands and prevent a build there next turn. Go ahead and use your powers to push all of them away. Central wetlands. Oh, wait. Sorry. Wrong one. How many can we do? Up to three, yeah. Click, click, click. That's how it works. Oh, and they want us to use the flooding as well. I didn't know was supposed to, uh, So, this was massive flooding. We can clear the inland sands in front of there. Go ahead and use your powers to push all the inventors to the central and. Maybe I miss I misused the wrong ability. Hmm. All invaders, it says here. I may have made a mistake. <laughs> There's an undo button. Oh no, we can push all of them into there. That's why. I was wondering what's going on here. But yeah, you can push towns as well. Start the next phase. Yep. Rinse and repeat. Now we got even more cards and we're getting even more cards. Pull beneath the hungry earth. What was that? If target land has your presence on it, one fear and one damage. If target land is either a sands or wetlands, an extra damage. Cool. Wow. So we're going to do some massive damage. Okay. Play along with flash floods and river bounty. So pull beneath hungry and river's bounty, which is gonna allow me to move some Dohan around and kick some butt or Dahan. I can't remember. It's Dahan, isn't it? And floods to do more damage. And we still have our push as well it's at second level. So it does damage as well. So we're gonna do tons of damage. Fast abilities first. Coastal Mountains deal damage there. Up, up. As we're building more and more power. Ravaging the mountains. They're gonna get killed. <laughs> building the sands. There we go. Sand, sand, sands. Town. And they're gonna explore now the coastal lands. I mean, this does feel like it's going to go on forever, but you're just going to get more and more power, more and more hand size, more and more abilities. Okay, that's a lot of exploration. This time the invaders are exploring the coastal lands, so they added an explore to every land adjacent. Wow. This is looking difficult, isn't it? Slow movements. Uh, pull beneath hunger earth has two conditional effects, one that requires a present, one that needs a sands or wetlands. Luckily, you can satisfy both. I do a lot of damage. You can use your power to store the two towns in the coastal sands. Leave the explorers there. We have a track up our, track up our sleeves. So we can now deal, I think it was four damage or two damage. So we destroy the two towns. How do we destroy? Click a piece of design damage. Two damage remaining. Yeah. I don't have the power to destroy two. I have the power to destroy one. And then I have this ability over here to do two more damage. Pop, pop. There we go. More fear. Um, I think we could still push. I'm uh, it's saying don't push them, leave them alone. Having more Dahan is always good, especially in a central location where they can be pushed or gathered from use users bound in the central way. wetland. Okay. Let's bring in the two Dohan from the inland mountain. Yes, there are no invaders there. From okay, cool. Let's spawn some more. We're gonna have four. This is pretty cool. Spawn another one. Well, hey, these months and years go by. Okay, cool. 
And this sign is growing power. Hey, click to make it go faster. There's only a little more. I need to teach you before. Oh, thank God. You've grown in power and knowledge. Thank you. At this point, we have lots of energy and not much to do with it. Choose the third growth option, getting a new car, power card. Finally, accelerated rot. Two fear, four damage. That's powerful. It's slow. We've got a major power. These are generally more powerful than the minor powers we have. Okay. Cost more energy to use. All will also have a powerful elemental threshold ability, and this one is no exception. With the right elements, accelerated rot can do a whopping nine damage. Major powers have a drawback. When you gain them, you must forget a power card to make room for them. Oh no. Forgetting power means you don't have access to it anymore. You can't forget any power, including power you just gained. Click any power to forget it, except for nature's resilience. You will need it this turn. Okay. Um, let's see what we have. Uh, what was the one that buffed myself? Bone of Vigor? Bone of Vigor, bye. Because I don't really understand the power thing yet. Go ahead and add a presence wherever you like. Wherever you like. We don't care. Um, where might be necessary or needed. Uh, top or bottom. Guess we could do it at the top here. Let's drag it. Oh, it is, and we could choose either one. Okay, which presence? Um, this one gives us four cards to play. Reclaim one. Okay, so it has a special ability to allow us to reclaim a lost one. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to take... Or we could do it up here. This is three energy per turn. Uh, uh, uh. How much is energy to take? Four. Ooh, we're, not, we're nowhere near using that ability then, right? Hold on, hold on. Let's check, check our abilities. How much power do I have? Where's that at? Where's that at? Oh, it's so hard to read this stuff. I'm thinking we have six power. It's upper left-hand corner, plus two, so we have enough to play four, five, six. Let's take a power. Let's get another power. Even though the reclaim one means it might pop up another place. Yeah, boom, nine. Okay, that really went up. Start by playing it, Nature's Resilience. Put that in our stack. Now it's your choice for what cards to play. Think about the problems you need to solve on the board. I have no clue. Damage, just straight up damage. Super damage. Look at all this. If you have three, two, three, five damage, remove one. Oh, that's super powered. Uh, we have seven left. Push up to three or straight up. If it is a present, one fear and remove one. We don't have any to remove. Oh no. I'm not even paying attention at this point. Um. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna need this. I think this wash away. Um, now it's giving us the option to throw these back if we wanted to. Okay, remember I said we had a trick up our sleep. Nature's resistance has defense six effect. What does that mean? When we use it on land, when invaders would deal damage to the land or the Nahan there, they deal six less damage. Ah, because you can see the middle, the center part. We're gonna save all those guys. Zero damage. Okay. This means that the Dahan can destroy the invaders there. On the coastal sands, defend it ahead of the Ravage this turn. What? Why not here in the center where we're going to need it? Uh, well, okay, whatever. We'll just follow them. We earned a fear card last turn, so let's start. Let's have a look. Boom. Each player removes one from the land where it is only invader. Okay. You can always choose any land with a single explorer town. It's up to you. But well, you're just telling me to choose this one. Bye bye. Okay, we're almost finished. Here comes the ravage in the coastal sands. Watch how the defenders protect both the land and the Dahan. Boom, boom, fear and fear. And now they're just building <laughs> uh, again. Building another town. They explore. So am I making progress yet? And Mike it says it's almost over, so we have a lot of abilities here to pop. Low movement, okay. You're not ready to continue on your own. Victory's close and I believe you can do it. No, I can't. Remember the terry level cards show what you need to do to win. Really? Right now it requires you to move all explorers, towns, and cities. 
By generating enough fear to reach terror level 2, you can resist just towns and cities, which is much easier to achieve. Okay. Beware, there are three ways to lose. Running out of blight in the blight pool, or all your presence on the island will swell doom. The very deck they explore from has five cards left. All hope is lost. Whoa, stay positive. You've learned a great deal with courage and cleverness. One last step. If you change your mind about a decision, you can use the undo button. Yes. Woohoo! You have power that targets specific land types. That power can only be used on lands that match their restriction. Okay. Christ. Okay, I'm by myself now. Um, we can do four damage. So I could take out a bunch of people. Yeah, I'm going to pop this. I'm going to take out some people. Get my fear card. Terror level two. Ooh, nice. I can destroy... Oh, that's the requirement, by the way. You just have to destroy towns. Two, two. And then pop, pop. Okay, so we need to wash away a town or destroy a town. Push one. Dang it, wash away. So. Oh, where the town's at? I can push this one up here. And they'll destroy it. I think. Push you up here. And hopefully they'll destroy it. I'm not quite sure. I wasn't paying attention, by the way, what they were able to build. So, for example, they're going to build on these towns. So they're going to build. Oh, cancel. And then I can push one. Yeah, so I probably should have pushed them in, but whatever. Um, doesn't matter, I don't think. We have to think about our abilities as well. Jungle and wetlands. Oh. Um, Okay, okay. We need we need cards. We're getting cards. We're gonna lose this. Long signal if a target land has mm, push all mm, otherwise remove one. Okay. Dang. This, this is getting super complicated. There's all these abilities, they're really cool. Uh remove blights. We haven't got there to need it. Coastal, we don't I guess that's one we could use coastal. Where's my big damage though? Yeah, like to grab this. It's giving us a lot of fear. Got push. Uh huh. Got more fear. Push all people away. The target has land, has people on it. Hud might rise, rule, okay. If target land has your mm, that fear and one damage. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Uh, and, oh, we can gather some people and destroy stuff. That's also useful. And we can also do damage. Oh, I'm just taking all damage. Forget it. I'm not paying attention, by the way, to this. Hey, and it's damage as well. No, I'm good. Let's go straight in damage. Remember, we got to destroy all the towns and we win. Which, we have destroyed all the towns. I'm not sure how that works. Target's coastal. Deal two damage. Oh, there's the town right there. Boom, we, we won the game. Yay! Way, we did it! Way. Hey, thank you, Dual Wheeled Cats. I was already on top of it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I didn't even notice. I was like, yes, I figured it out on my own. And they're all running away. Awesome. All the Vader settlements have been destroyed, their morale is not strong enough to weather this loss. They depart the island for their faraway home. Yeah, reduced difficulty for sure. That was that was just a tutorial. <laughs> uh, oh, cool. So you can see here the information that we see the score, etc. Yeah. Okay. All right. Guess what? I'm going to call it there. That was just a tutorial. The tutorial was daunting, but really, really satisfying to complete. I don't know. I like that. That was really fun. I enjoyed it because I learned a lot. I think that's that's great. It was really good, really well-written tutorial. I'm, I'm glad I did it because if I jumped in this game without a tutorial, I would have been so lost. But yeah, really nice to get the board game in the game, making it very clear. 
Excellent. Right, I'm going to look forward to this. Hope that was interesting. There's a lot to digest. There's still plenty of things to learn as we play through the other parts. Adding the difficulty, adding in adversaries, etc. So thank you very much for watching. I do this every Wednesday and Saturday this month. 7 p.m. Central European summertime. I think that is 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, it's 2 p.m. If you like the video and you're watching on YouTube, please hit me up with a like, comment, subscribe, the usual stuff. If you're on Twitch, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate all the Twitch viewers. Check out the rest of the channel if you're interested in card games, board games, indie games in general. Right. Thank you once more, and I'll catch you next time.